which case the rotation of both the source and detector together we eliminated translation completely can i eliminate rotation that's the next logical you know big step that you can think about well if i have to rotate the uh, eliminate the complete rotation the first ecosystem is i know how to make the detector the problem with this is the 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 source is x ray tube that we have been using for decades now right i mean in the when this is all developing so the detector technology is advancing so now i could just uh, get an array of detectors not only that because of that i could also get circular so i would first take arrest not moving both rotating both the Uh, source and the detector i will have a stationary detector that is all surrounded the patient so here what is going to happen i have completely done away with rotating first translating motion was avoided now even the rotation of the detector is avoided so instead of doing that what is done only the source is now moved right circled around the patient and you have your detectors all of all around the patient so wherever the source is coming that fan beam the wide fan beam that is coming only that part i can record right you could clearly see the advantage it started giving exceptional right compared to where you started with 6 minutes or 5 minutes kind of acquisition time quickly you see when you come to the fourth generation now you are talking about few seconds okay so this is very powerful so lot of applications started popping up from a clinical perspective because these tools these scanners were uh, getting to a speed where it was meaningful that they could record some aspects physiologically right so you want to do heart heart beat so you want to be i said the respiration can be held but then you have some other mo- moving parts as well so i want to do some Uh, remember the contrast agent so you want it to go your blood vessel is moving your heart is pumping so now if you get it to seconds right you have significant advantage okay you can start to see things applications that you never imagined before so it became very powerful but uh, is there any um, i mean like like how we did for the other generations what is it that we are going to pay up for of course the cost and all is going to go up <laughs> right don't worry about the cost per se but yeah it is important but technically what is happening technically you have gained in time is there anything else you are losing yes sir. two things you had worried about scattering in the second generation and third generation because you had to have collimation here you notice because the source is moving you can have any angle right you cannot really have a detector with a fixed angle when the detector and the source were moving together you could have collimator based on the line of uh, sight right from the source to detector you could have a collimator whereas here the det- i can change my step size for my rotation of my x ray uh, tube source so in which case i cannot really have the same line of sight so a detector must be able to pick depending on where the source is shooting so you cannot really have a fixed collimator so the collimator aspect is done away with so the moment you do away with the collimator what is the problem a problem is you are now you are having multiple lines and you don't have collimation so even though you gain significantly with respect to time of acquisition your compton scattering is going to be a huge role the only advantage i mean where where do you gain oh because i am going to have this surrounding the in a, in a circumference the detector size can be bigger so if you have more area to pick the photon probably your signal is also going up so your detector efficiency is increased but then compton scattering is going to be there so everything said and done in fourth generation you are still able to get image quality comparable to your previous generation right with not 
so much significant improvement or significant increase in exposure but very significant decrease in acquisition time so these are very popular generations because uh, you, you see you, you don't really lose much ct itself you are seeing new 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 aspects inside the body so you see new information at if you accepted the initial quality when you got trained in this modality as a doctor right you are still seeing that quality but now you are your clinical applications open because you can do it fast okay you can start to see some anatomy which are moving which is a huge deal right so these are now the question is good where is my next promotion <laughs> right where, what do i do how do i push the market how do i help the physicians more and come up with the next generation well you look at it the only thing that we have not touched so far in this paradigm is your why is the source moving only one x-ray tube is there in all the generations we saw only one x-ray tube is there and the x-ray tube is moving the challenge is unlike detector detector like i said you know we'll we'll talk about it but the advancement started to happen and so they were but x-ray tube has been there from uh, you know from before even for projection radiography you use the same x-ray tube so this is the active part right so it is heating it is bulky you have high voltage so this is cumbersome so you you cannot have multiple x-ray tubes and you know try to rotate them so uh, it, it becomes challenge so in some sense they didn't uh, work on the x-ray tube aspect to have multiple source because of the bulkiness of the x-ray tube and and it's a very critical uh, component unlike the detector which the, the uh, evolution was parallelly happening because of advancement in semiconductor whereas this one is still was a challenge so the next best thing would be oh i'll go to my physics what is the role of x ray tube generates x ray how is it generated oh i have a particulate right electron beam that electron beam goes hits the anode out comes the x ray then you do filtering shaping all that we know that so now you are saying asking the project manager look until now we have been doing the only problem i see is the source instead of rotating the source right and you are saying rotating the source is challenging because it is bulky all those things so you cannot have even multiple source because it's wear and tear instead how about if i can use the electron right i can move the electron around that is easy so instead of having x ray tube moving around i have come with a uh, generation right which is called as electron beam ct so instead of moving the x ray tube what can i do i can move around the electron and have my anodes at different locations so somehow if i can steer the charged electron the kinetic energy it will come and hit the anode and i can have x ray generated so you see this sophisticated instrumentation setup so it is extremely complicated but the idea is instead of rotating the x ray tube the source instead of doing that i will create my x rays from different view points by keeping anode at those locations and steering my electron beam to that anode how neat right i mean at least from a scientist point of view from a engineering point of view it looks cool right look at the thinking instead of just moving the thing you say uh, oh don't do that x ray tube manufacturing ecosystem is set we have vendor uh, you know so don't do that now you tell okay instead of doing that can i just have fixed anode plates at different locations right the patient will not know anything behind i will essentially have a big setup where i will have my electrons move around and go hit a, a particular anode where i want the x ray view right so that is what this one is so you had stationary source and stationary detector look at the advantage used for fast we call this as cine loop like cinema right cine cine loop means you can actually get a movie that is what it means used for fast whole heart imaging so we could 
really get the whole art pumping, I could get the slice of that, right? Whole art imaging I could get. That is cool, right? Instead of just a bone fracture, maybe some abdomen, is there as a, you know, a lump that is formed inside the body, which is all important. But then look at this, cardiovascular, I can get my heart which is moving, dynamics, I could get it because of the speed, fast acquisition times. So, the idea here is, you steer the electron rather than moving the exterior Fantastic. You can see, very nice, had its role, it has its importance. But then, always uh, the engineering mindset and the, the application, there are two things, right? So, the doctors, they started seeing things, new newer applications started popping up. So, it had real, it, it really served a purpose. But then, the, the reach, right? It was very cumbersome, very cumbersome. Because look at the sophisticated instruments, the maintenance, all that was an issue. But it it was a it was nice generation, but it was not probably uh, you know as popular as the. So if I didn't really have a need, I wouldn't uh, go for this, right? So if I want to do heart imaging, uh, yeah, I will I will try to use it. But otherwise, I will not. I need a dedicated system setup where I know these patients are going to come and it is worth investing in this infrastructure. Only then I would go for this, right? So then what do you say? Okay, that is fine, but uh, the, the uh, part in me says, how do I maximize the benefit of these advancements so that more people can come, more affordable, what will I do? Right, I mean that is the logic, right? What will you do? Well. I will go back to my drawing room and say, look, drawing table and say, look, your detector technology is evolving, right? Now, this is all fine. Where could I see the next advancement? I will say, you are now talking about only one slice, right? You, you are talking about only one slice. Go back to our projection radiography. We saw the whole chest region, chest radiography. So, now I want to get greedy. I got the timing information, I got new applications. So, can I now, instead of getting one slice, can I get more slice? So, that I can do a volume imaging. I could have several slices put next to each other. Actually, I can do the whole volume. So, I can go from a head to toe, right, in slice. So, that I can have full 3D instead of just one slice, right. So, Oh, uh, so th that is the idea, right? That is the idea. So, I want to get multiple slices, right? Good. Uh, the natural extension for that is, just to hypothetically think, if I want multiple slices, can I have detectors, like I can have line detectors you saw. So, can I have detectors now in, uh, you know, uh, several detector lines covering an area? Not so fast, right? It was still evolving, but that would be prohibitively expensive. Then they looked at and said, look, what I want, I can do this slice, right? Instead of moving, so when we started, we were translating from left to right and then rotating the whole setup. Now, I got one slice. So if I want to go from head to toe, what will I do? Oh, you could either move, right? Move the slice acquisition like this or instead of moving the instrument, you can have the patient bed, right, where you are lying. So, I can motorize that, I can make it sophisticated so that the acquisition is still whatever the previous generation, but I can move the patient so that I can go head first like this, right. So, that is what is shown here. So, why it derives its name as helical? is imagine you are moving in this direction and it is scanning in the rotation, right? It is scanning around the patient and the patient is moving. So, what will it look like? It will look like a helix, right? That is why the name is helical scanner. So, the biggest, uh, um, you know, this is not, uh, this is in the 90s. So, look at the progress from the 70s, right? When, when the initial work was done and they got the Nobel Prize for that, 
70s, 80s, in the 90s you are talking about 6th generation. So, every few years you are really pushing it. Okay. So, here the point is everything else is similar, but you have added this uh, you know bench, your patient bench also is part of your instrumentation for data acquisition. It is not just patient lying. That is also technically contributing to the registration because that is its position has to be recorded so that in the recon you know how it is happening. So, in some sense technically it is a part of instrumentation. Okay. Uh, what are the other advantages that you, uh, other technical advances that apart from that, you know, the, the detectors that I talked about, what are the other advancements? See, you have now too many wires, right? So many detectors, each one is feeding out, right? You are reading the data out. Now, you have the whole thing has to, uh, the source has to move inside, right? Now, you are saying the patient has to move, the bed has to move in and out. So, you are talking about a lot of wires, rotation, translation, you do not want them to, you know, get clogged or anything. So, what happened is you had uh, slippering technology that was maturing, right. So, without, uh, so you could rotate this gantry, you could move, do all this without the wires getting uh, intertwined. So, the slippering technology started to become really useful, they adapted that to this instrumentation. So, the mechanical design and the electrical design for for the, the control of both, the, uh, you have two aspects, right? One is your data coming out. The other is all these control signals to move your uh, translate, rotate your bed or your source, that those wires. So, they were able to essentially use slippering technology became very uh, popular and uh, very useful. And therefore, you could start to do all the uh, integrate patient bench motion and other things without much trouble. So, helical scanner, so you could get entire abdomen or chest completed in 30 seconds. Fantastic, right? We talked about say in second generation, we were talking about some 30 seconds. Now, but that was one slice. Now, you can get a whole chest or whole abdomen. So, you are talking about say, for example, several centimeters, right? Whole chest, whole abdomen. We are talking about several centimeters you could get in 30 seconds, right? Fantastic. Well, so far so good. So, this is popular as well. But then uh, I would still like to have multiple slices. Can I do even faster? How can I do even faster? Well, I can do even faster. The same logic, instead of moving the patient, right? Translating the patient, can I Go back to your first generation, you were doing translation. We wanted to avoid this translation to gain time. Now, you are moving the patient in helical. So, you are getting 3D, you can get the whole different slices. But if I want to reduce the time even further, what will I do? Or oh, instead of moving the patient, can I have multiple detectors, right? One row of detectors you saw. Can I have another row of detectors? Right. So, if I have two rows of detectors, I have two slices recorded at the same time. If I have three rows, I get three rows of slices recorded at a time. Right. So, again, so the logic was in the seventh generation, right, you got what is called as multiple detector array. So, when you have, when, when they say array means you have several elements, array of elements. Now, you have multiple detector arrays. So, you are single, right this is the fan beam, you have one full array. This was the thing in the fourth generation, right? Third generation, fourth generation. Fourth generation, essentially you were rotating and getting it. So, third generation, for example, you got one array. Now, what you are doing is, you can get multiple arrays you can position. Only thing is, what you have to do? Instead of sending a fan, right, with only thickness proportional to one detector size, remember how the x-ray tube generates. It generates a cone, right, its point source, it goes like a cone. That is how we did in projection, projection radiography, right. So, here deliberately, I have to have, make sure that I have this fan 
but the fan should be spreading over how many ever detector array I have. If width of height of one detector is x and I have 4 arrays here, then I have 4 x. So, I have to know my you know, width has to be 4 x. Okay. So, the idea here is direct brute force extension of the previous generations with advancement in the array. So, you can have multiple detector array. So, there is a, a, a site which I accessed uh, uh, a year ago. Uh, I found it to be very useful. There are several more animations and uh, sketches that I found to be useful, right, along with uh, in, the, in the line of what we are discussing here, okay. I have no conflict of interest, uh, okay. So, it's just uh, I found it useful. So, maybe you may want to take a look at it. Uh, so, that is your seventh generation. So, good. Do you think is there anything else that we could do? Right? It is 2000, sir. Anything else we could do? Right? Well, not, I mean, the, the still you can do, you can, you can, uh, what we are silent so far, right? What happens after 2000? Did nothing happen? Right? what has been happening in the last uh, decade or two, uh, everything done. Not really, I mean these were developed in the 2000s and now it is becoming popular. So, you would hear uh, uh, multi-size scanners, right? typically 64 slice scanners that are coming to the market. If you are in say uh, India for example, these are still niche instruments that are there only in few select uh, uh, hospitals. right? So, it is still becoming popular, right? Um, so, we are in that stage, but where is the lot of uh, developments happening? We will come to it. The all until now, we have talked about only data acquisition, hardware, and uh, instrumentation. We have not really talked about the computation aspect of it, right? After you get the data, we have to recon, get the images of the slice. Now, you are getting so much, so many different slice volumes. So, you have so much data. So, lot of effort still is going on. How do you digest this information? Right? How do you visualize this information? 3D, 4D, how do I plot it? How do I see what is happening in certain applications? Right? So, I send contrast agent and I see the heart pumping. So, I have several aspects that I want to visualize. How does this perfuse into the tissue? So, you have higher orders. So, you have so much data, so much new information coming and you have to churn all this to do the computation. And no guess here, at this year 2021, you would have probably lot of buzzword you would see is all about big data, deep learning, AI, right? So, you have lot of data coming in. So, lot of research in the last couple of decades has been uh, essentially going towards uh, how do we handle so much data, can it be patient specific, how do we you know do handle the data, visualize the data, process the data. So, the second part of this module right to do with the image recon that will be very interesting uh, in that sense. Now, we have just covered the data acquisition generations, how, how has it uh, come along. Okay. So, uh, that said, Essentially, the idea is reduced scan time and increased Z uh, resolution. Z is, remember, X, Y we used for the plane of the image. So, if that is what we are going to, so the other direction was Z in, in our projection radiography coordinates. If you look at it, we will redefine the coordinate one more time when we actually do the recon because you need to know what your, where is the signal coming from. But generally, if you vaguely remember how we did projection radiography, we always use F of X comma Y as the input source 3D object, right, image of the 3D object, the G of X comma Y on the plane and the Z we used it for uh, separation between the uh, source and uh, uh, detector, right. So, 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 Z is your thickness in, in this regard it is the thickness, okay. So, we can get reduced scan time and increased if you have multiple detectors, I could get 
slice thickness can be improved because that will be about the size of the detector, right? So, you can get 64 slice per rotation. Look at this whole body in about 30 seconds, right? So, powerful. These are the different uh, geometries that we have talked so far. Source, right? You get this line, first generation, first generation. Then we talked about fan beam. This is called as your cone beam when you did the 2D, right? You had your detector array stacked, volumetric, okay? So, this is your cone beam. So, now the question is, we got the data in this format. Along the line, I get one value. Along the line, I get another value. So, I have collapsed, I have projected this. This is the data I have. Like this, I have it at different angles. This is along this line, I have a value. Along this line, I have a value. So, but it is arranged in a curvilinear fashion. And I have it for different rotations. So, these are the raw data that you have measured using the different schemes, different generation detectors that, that we have talked about. Of course, we will uh, write, right now, the, the current generation, you are talking about multiple detectors. So, it is an area. So, you have one detector, next detector line, third array, fourth array. So, you have several of them. Clear? So, this is about your data acquisition part of your instrumentation. Major, major uh, development of the different generations. The different components in this thing, several of this we, we saw X-ray tube for example is X-ray tube, there is nothing new to cover. So, we have X-ray tube already. What, uh, uh, what we need to still cover is some uh, specifics that are there, but major, major components in the X-ray projection system that we covered will be used here as is. The major component that is slightly different is your detector part. So, most scanners use only X-ray tube, right? That's why, so this is nothing different from what we have covered already because of this reason, okay? So, um, again, improvisations. We could use multiple energy sources, right? So, I could excite with 80 kilo volt peak. I could excite with the next 140 kilo volt peak. I could record the data at two different energy levels. That's where you talk about. So, you, you recall the, the basic plot that we had, the hill type kind of energy versus X-ray intensity, right? When we talked about Brahms straw lung. So, that's the spectra that goes in, right? So, you could do that at two different energy levels because we know your mu is a function of energy also, right? Material property. So, you, you kind of uh, do the data acquisition at two different energy levels, then we could also use that information to tease out the difference in the material property. So, dual energy X-ray you could do. You could do uh, collimation and filtering are slightly different. You still have, we saw some of the collimation. Why, why is it slightly different? Because in projection radiography, we basically sent a cone, right? Here we talked about pencil beam or right, you know, fan beam. Even if it is a cone, it is not cone, uh, no, you are look cone as in you do not have a curvature, you do not want that. What you are wanting is the slices. So, it is like this, the thickness direction is like this. So, if it was a cone, it would be like this, right? But you are talking about parallel, but it will be fan in the direction. In one direction, it will be a fan, the other direction, it will be, uh, so it is not technically a cone. But it is, so you have to make a special filter, uh, you know, you remember about the collimators, how we did. You have to shape it, have a slit so that I can increase the, uh, if I am doing only one detector array, I would want the cone that is coming out, I want two LEDs so that only along that plane, right, along that slice X-ray goes. If I want the slice to be thick, I will make the, so the filtration, uh, that is your uh, you know, your field of view could be adjusted. When we talked about filtering, ah, we talked about filtering in the context of removing the uh, low 
energy right so here deliberately what you do is you make it hard okay what do you mean by hard hardening the beam beam hardening what does it mean we covered this ah you remove the low energy so that you are moving it to the right okay so fan beam angle of 30 to 60 degree is used with fan thickness so fan thickness is the uh, thickness direction right slice thickness direction so you are typically in the order of 1 to 10 millimeters so here most filtering uh, you know it's very similar but it's a little more aggressive here so you get more hardened beam so the concept of filtering all those things are very similar to what we did in projection radiography but here we are making it more hard why you, you, when you mean making it more hard what is happening you are narrowing the spectrum and moving it right you are narrowing the spectrum initially it was wide you preferentially take the lower so the width of the spectra is reducing it becomes narrow that means you have only less number of energy distribution you don't have wide range of energies why is this important here why am I aggressive I want to really reduce it Oh, in projection radiography, right, in projection radiography, even though we wrote the equation, we said uh, um, uh, mono-energetic, poly-energetic, even though we recognized it as poly-energetic, we, we, we were okay with not being aggressive. Why? Because image was formed, right, image was formed and average energy equivalent to interpret was good enough because anyway, I am collapsing the whole dimension. So, that was good enough. Whereas here, the data that you are recording, you have to now start to reconstruct at different locations. So, that means my assumptions, right, I am going to start with a value that is detected, I have to have a model, I have to reconstruct. So, that has to be the model, right, the image, uh, the, 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 the attenuation law, the model that we made for the signal, that has to be, we have to practice, be as close as possible to the model that we described and that happens if you have mono energetic case it is easier to handle so as far as possible you make it hardened so that even though you know it is poly energetic your estimate of an equivalent mono energetic can be used in the recon all right mathematics and you won't be too far away from the reality Okay, so that is the, because ideally, uh, you know, ideally you might say I want only one energy, but that's not going to happen. So, you can be as narrow as possible. Okay, so sources more monoenergetic, it's not monoenergetic, it's more monoenergetic than before. That's why you want to harden it. Okay, so this is one thing that is uh, specific to CT because you are going to start with the detected value and do reconstruction. Okay. Uh, good, so, so much for, so X-ray source and collimation, we talked about that. What are the uh, other aspects? The most important aspect, I did say that, oh, advancement in detector, right, that's what we were exploiting. But you really think about it, the major difference between your projection radiography, right, what was the bottleneck of projection radiography and it took so much time. It's not that uh, people were not aware of the mathematics. In fact, uh, uh, you will be, I was really, um, it was a, a moment to really appreciate these things. Uh, I learned that the radon, the, the work by radon, radon, right, radon transform which we will be heavily using in the recon, right. Those, lot of those theorems and work happened, radon published in the uh, early 20th century, 1915-16. So, that is kind of contemporary, right? About 10 years after your X-ray uh, started coming for medical applications, uh, medical imaging application. So, in some sense, the mathematics he was dabbling with how to reduce the uh, dimensionality and recover the dimensionality from a mathematics perspective. So, he has done a lot of Radon theorem and other things happened those time. But when did your CT happen? And the problem of, oh, I am losing my depth, 
is known to the uh, you know the physicists that time also but and the doctors would probably also share that opinion oh i want to see what is there inside not just the projection but the problem was they didn't really have that they, they were used so the parallelly the photography was also developing right photographic film chemistry development chemistry all that things were also develop uh, uh, rapidly progressing light was a big deal right in the early century last year last uh, uh, century early last century so the point is the need was there but the biggest bottleneck was how do i record the data right so the detection part rest of it same right x-ray tube the detector was the key so now we wanted to have a detector where i could actually record the value and take it for computation that is the key so what happened your semiconductor those started your diodes right transistors those started appearing they became very mature right so advances in solid state electronics essentially that translated to so the idea of modern detectors right where you can do ct so that transformation started post world war 2 perhaps right after you had uh, uh, semiconductor devices that were mature enough that they understood they could use for this then probably they worked for a you know a decade or so to put the come up with this idea of okay i could use these detectors and collect the data the first generation right so in some sense even though we would say ct was introduced uh, the first shown to work in the 70s but your x ray projection radiography x ray was uh, you know about 75 80 years earlier than that it is all because at that point of time what are the other so it's very interdisciplinary right multiple disciplines have to progress so here big big uh, uh, development came because of the development of the detector part of it mostly due to your semiconductor electronics so silicon your scintillator crystal right you might look at what is it? so look at the objective of the projection radiography instrumentation on the detector side what was it oh x ray photon came it hit the photographic film the conversion ratio was poor and therefore they used some material phosphor active material right phosphor was there what was it doing it was the intensifying screen go look at that so it was trying to convert the x ray energy to light energy and that light photon went and spoiled the x ray now what i want same thing i cannot measure the x rays so here also i want to convert the x rays i want to convert the x ray photons into visible light photons but then i want to you measure that photon take it out read that so that i can do operations with it right so you started getting these photo diodes right so essentially this advancement led to the scintillating crystals also like i said calcium tungstate what we used right uh, what the edison was uh, using in the early developments but once so that was still used in the x-ray film right whereas uh, this detector you started getting rarer materials okay so you had all these which will use for scintillator what is scintillator it is converting your x-ray energy so inside so x-rays come and fall on the detector and what does it do the scintillating crystal essentially convert this x-ray into light photons and once that happens that goes feeds into your photo diode and then i can record right i can get my voltage i can record what is coming out each of the locations and do computation so two major advancements one is your detector part advancement of this and then having said that uh, computation i am not going to cover about that but the idea is once you get that the generic advancement in computation started uh, uh, lending its way so it's the ct detector this is a important advancement that enabled the uh, acquisition of data so that it can be done for reconstruction okay so this is an important uh, piece in the instrumentation so you not only had like this you had several other versions as well 
for example if you look at uh, third generation where you had collimator that was you, direction was very important it was aligned with the source right so in those cases we also talked about because of that the signal uh, detection goes down because you have your collimator and it is in that so your scattering was supposed to be avoided but also because of neighboring beams and you put collimation your efficiency also goes down how do they so essentially they also had few other ways mostly for the third generation which uh, this was very directional detector where you have uh, a xenon ga gas tightly packed chamber so the moment uh, x rays come and hit you have ionization that is taking place and then you had cathode that was at a very uh, you know you had this cathode and anode right so you had a very high voltage differential that was kept therefore when x rays came it ionized the xenon gas when ionization happens you have a voltage difference you have current so they could essentially uh, you know uh, use that conversion so this was very useful for when they needed very directional uh, uh, amplification of the signal mostly for the third generation okay so towards the end what happened oh so this was their line array was there in the development of this basically led to so in 3g systems require very small directional so xenon gas based detector was used but like we said more uh, advanced scanners nowadays we are talking about not just one line we are talking about arrays of this i mean array two dimensional right so you have one array next so you see several of them one row next row okay so in multiple detector array system individual solid state detector so you are now talking about 1 mm cross 1.5 1 mm is in the in the uh, if you want to call it uh, along the width right height is 1.25 mm the slice thickness is in this range so you still see it's it's fairly small i mean 1 mm 10 right So the crystal is only one mm in height, so you could get as thin a slice as one point two five mm, which is pretty damn good, right? So the advancement is because of the advancement in the detector. So not a surprise. That is what we saw in our advantages, right? You you have these cell phones having cameras now with so much uh, pixels, right? All this advantage we get with. ccds all that this advantage is also translate i mean these are all happening parallelly and uh, also medical uh, imaging uh, ct detectors benefited out of those development not just the photography part okay okay so we are not going to really go in deep with the other uh, in spa instruments in the instrumentation one is the gantry so what is a gantry the, you saw the big uh, the, you, when you see the photo of a ct right you see this housing where the source detector ring is there and the source has to move right so the whole thing has to rotate so that whole part the mechanical casing all that is called as your gantry okay and um, so these are kind of very matured uh, and uh, so we are not really going to go into deep in this uh, gantry slip rings like i said so you have to have the gantry should rotate for example then you have your data channel signal coming so slip rings that is another part that is uh, used so this is mostly the other parts are patient table mostly the these parts are uh, in some sense uh, traditional uh, mechanical design electrical design um, you know engineering which was which is well matured that was not the bottleneck so it kind of came along with that okay so there is not some no real new sophistication that was required this is a big deal why the generations changed and ct evolved your detector is a big deal so detection and the strategy of acquiring the data that is changed to address this big uh, limitation of how do i get the, through the slice right that is changed and then most important part what do i do with this data so now i acquire the data 
what do I do with this data? I have to do the image formation. And we don't call it, we, we will cover it in the title of image formation, but then here image is not formed by itself. You are actually doing reconstruction. You are forming the image by reconstructing. How, what do you mean by reconstructing? I get the data, right, using these strategies. I have to now reconstruct what would be along the path, right? So, um, with respect to instrumentation, I think we will stop here. Uh, perhaps it will be a good point to stop now and start the, the imaging aspect, the image formation module in the subsequent lecture. Okay, thank you.